It's L.A. Tent Manassas. Why am I here today? I mean, should I just own this place? I think I should just own this place. I mean, or maybe I should just work here. Yeah, right. Oh, my gosh. Here we go again. What are we going to do this thing? What do we do to the plum crazy? Let's have the before. The before look. And the after look. Okay, the change of appearance is about to begin. The before and the after. What are we doing? What are we going to do to it, right? So, oh, we got to do the sides, the markers. Got to do that. I forgot about uh, telling Travis that, so I'm going to go out here and tell him that. All right, so let's look at this. these guys. What time is it? See what time it is right there? Watch these guys. These guys should be actually on the NASCAR circuit changing out tires and wheels. Because as fast and efficient as these guys are, these guys make it look simple. They just like bing bam done. All right, for those who watch my channel, what do you got? 25s on the side, 15 in the rear. What are we doing? I don't know. Well, and, well, I can't keep track of this stuff because this isn't my calling in life. So what's the spec sheet show? So what, what has he got? 25 and what? 25 and then 15 on the strip. So 25 all the way around? Yeah. Okay. So 25 all the way around and then 15 on the front uh, top area of the windshield. And then I want to tin out the, uh, the markers. And I think it'd be pretty cool to do the rear tail lights. These things are so freaking bright. So to get that red out of there. So let's see how it all plays out. Wowsker, where is everybody? Um, I've been coming here many, many years. And I can honestly say that every time I call these guys, they take great care of me and they get me right in but i can honestly say that this is now the second time i've been here and this just isn't that busy so are the times are changing i don't know i guess as time progresses we will find out but these guys are great people they get you right in i mean right now i'd be one bet you could call and get right in so keep that in mind la tent manassas okay the project, it is a project. Got the side markers on. Got the sides on. Got the rear on. Wow, that back is so dark. You don't really see it, but you do. And these guys are rocking. And it's 12.30, so they're not right now. They're basically like 35 minutes. Wow. Side markers are done. Front windshield done. Everything's done. And I was thinking about doing the rear tail lights, but that's like a major project. But you can you can actually darken out this, the back of lights, or you can do the whole thing, but you gotta remove these Dodge emblems. Then you have to buy new ones. But then the car doesn't pass inspection. So I might forget that. It's not worth it. Oh, I don't even know what number this is. What number is this? How many number, what number is this? I don't even know. So here it is, Super B Dodge Charger. Just uh, got the windows tinted out. Plum crazy, side markers. And I think they did a great job. And even for me, I can't keep track of even what number this car was. It's number 63, 64, 65. What is it? So, let me get her on the road, and let's go have some fun in the Dodge Charger Super B that I just had my window send in L.A. Tim Manassas, Virginia. Wow. Hey, who do you know that gets 73 window tints? Who do you know? Who do you know? Here I'm in L.A. Tim Manassas, Virginia, the Dodge Plum Crazy Super B Charger Wide Body. Wow. 
I just got another window tint here at LA Manassas. And you know what? They just told me I'm, this is the 73rd car that I've had done at his shop. They got the rear taillight markers tinted, front uh, marker tinted out, uh, all the uh, sides, front window strip, and I think the car looks really good. I mean, kind of with the sun, it's kind of harder to get the real peel, but I think the Plum Crazy looks just like it says. It's crazy. Okay, I'm in Manassas, Virginia. Oarsman Ford, what was known as Battlefield Ford. You know, I'm gonna do a drive-through on their dealership. Let's see how things are going. A good friend of mine now works here, and there's a nice Ford Mustang there, brand new. Maverick, the Bronco Sport's never been a thing, but look here, one Bronco, two Bronco, three Bronco, four Bronco, five Bronco, six Bronco, seven, eight, eight Broncos right there, nine Broncos, 10 Broncos, 11 Broncos, 12 Broncos, wow. So they've got quite the selection, 13 Broncos, wow. 14 Broncos, 15 Broncos, wow. I mean, wow, even for me, wow. So it looks like um, they've got a lot of Broncos. Look at all the Ford trucks. So, yes, the, ch the change of times, I would have to say, has happened. Wow. I mean, I mean, look at this. Look at this. I mean, on my YouTube channel, my conversation, I talked this morning about how the best thing could happen to the big three right now is for all these United Auto Workers to not go to work. I mean, I'm not embellishing here by any means on how uh, you're witnessing. This is just one Ford dealership, and believe it or not, they've got a whole other, you know, section of trucks um, up there, up the road, which I'm just not going to do that. I'm going to keep on moving, but wow. Wow. So here's the Dodge Charger Super B Flare Time. This car is so much fun. It really is. I mean, I just love this car. This car... I've said it now for the last few days. Could I part with the, the uh, Hellcat Charger Red Eye and be happy and content in this? I really could. I mean, these cars are so, in so many ways, powerful, fun, more than enough power to get you and yourself into trouble. So, and that's the thing about these high performance cars. Until you own them, you just don't kind of get that it's very easy to really misbehave and when you get misbehaving in these cars um sadly <laughs> what can end up playing in that is uh you're not uh happy with your insurance bill and you may not be happy with having to go visit the judge yeah i mean these cars just hit cr crazy uh crazy speeds and, and so the whole point of that is this car here, you can have a lot of fun. You can get a lot of fast time in this car without having to own a Hellcat, as I'm trying to tell you. All right, got it. Build 10th there, isn't that nice? So that's really cool. Got the uh, windows tinted. Didn't get real radical. I mean, it's dark, but I didn't get too radical. I went 25% all the way around uh, versus some people go 15, 20. That's really dark. And. Like the state of Virginia, I think the best you can even go is maybe 50%. And 50% tint in these windows, borderline, doesn't even look like you um, tinted the window. But it's all, uh, it's different rules in this uh, Virginia area now where the police can't pull you over for illegal tint. You have to be misbehaving, doing other things that will then have them check your window tint. That is, if you're driving down the state of Virginia roadway and you get pulled over uh, for speeding or a illegal pass, whatever it may be, you're gonna get that first offense. And then if a police officer wants to give you a little bit more trouble, he'll do a window tint check and meter check on your window, and then he can write you another ticket. And then if the person doesn't have a front license plate displayed on your car, 
then he can give you another ticket. So, I mean, very easily, you can be in a $300 ticket, you know, just between uh, the moving violation, and that could be more, but very conservative, and the two other violations. So, L.A. Tim and Ashes, I think they do a really good job. But, yeah, I was talking to one of the employees there, and it is factual. They have so down. Oh, the fun time. These cars are so cool with today's technology that you can go into these different settings and you can change the way the car behaves. And it's just so cool. I mean, instantly his car downshifted when I did that. And so his car now is a little bit more of an aggressive mode here. And it's just so much fun because the car now is wanting to play. And when you don't have the car in the sport mode, you have in the auto mode, the car um, is very lazy. It, it just isn't operating off all eight cylinders at lower speeds. So in the sport mode, it just gives you that real full power capability. And it stiffens up the suspension. It stiffens up the steering. It stiffens up the, or I should say, makes the transmission shift quicker, keeps the transmission a little higher gear. So it just becomes much more of a fun car that gives you the uh, the fun time. And, and that's what it's all about, right? So much all about having fun. But here's the thing I talk about all the time. Each of these modes, the traction control now has been turned off. And you have to go over here to the um, settings and you have to go into turning back on the traction control, which is right here. So now, jeez, oh I can't, you know what's incredible is, with all these different cars I own, it's so challenging to know. There it is. I mean, there's a display down here for the actual uh, lane departure. So anyways, um, just this car is just so much fun. And I talk about it all the time. If somebody said to me, hey, I can't afford a Hellcat, I'd be like, yeah, okay. Anybody, but I was so bad they bought a Hellcat. I'd be like, are you racing the car? Are you drive racing the car? No. Okay, well, what's going on? Well, I just want to be the fastest guy on the road. Well, you won't be. But yeah, the Hellcat's badass. So it's a blast. But if you're able to afford the 392 um, setup all day long, I mean, all day long, you'd be foolish to then say, well, I'm going to wait a few years to buy a Hellcat. I'd be like, it's not worth it. The 392 is a great, fun vehicle. You can get incredible exhaust out of it. You can get the incredible thrill of getting the power out of it. And you'll be extremely satisfied and you'll save yourself a lot of money. I mean, so, once again, anybody's out there shopping and you think you don't have the budget, if you have the budget for the 392, go for it. Now, the only downside to the Mopar product is the active exhaust you know so for you really to get any fun out of this car you're gonna have but no choice to strip out uh, the exhaust i mean really you have to take out the resonator you know do you change out the mufflers debatable but it's so unfortunate that dodge did not put an active exhaust in this car and it's you know in some aspects it's a bummer they didn't do the rev matching as well but if anything the exhaust because you can hear the car right now it's just nothing on that factor of like wow this is really cool so there's the negative but when you kind of get into it you definitely hear the car now one of my favorite features here in this car is the adaptive cruise control which gives you the availability to make it now where the car automatically paces itself without you having your foot on the pedals. And that's so neat, the billet style gas pedal and brake pedal, isn't that neat? So now the car is driving, pacing itself correctly to the vehicles in front of you for the speed you set it. But also, as I mentioned earlier this morning in my video, if you don't like the adaptive cruise, you do have the option just to use the regular cruise where you can control the car in so many aspects, but this is really the better way to learn how to drive a car. Adaptive cruise control, it's so cool. You just sit here and set up your speeds, 
and then the car, whatever the speed of the car is in front of you, if you're going faster than them, once you approach that car, the car automatically pulls itself back and it distances itself. Here you got these little buttons right here where you push this little button, you can get closer, you push the longer button, you can get further away, and that gives you more of a buffer zone from being too close to the car. And so, once again, you can set your speeds, and if the guy in front of you is not going the speed limit you want him to go, at least you don't run into him. The car just kind of takes care of you, not having to uh, turn your uh, that you turn on your control, cruise control off and on. That's what's so nice about it. Hey, I'm loving the tinted out windows. It really is a nice feature because it makes the car cooler and, you know, yeah, cooler, right? I'm in a cool car, but it keeps the heat out of it. And then it also gives you a little bit more privacy. That's what I like about the window tint on these vehicles. So it's tinted out somewhat. People can't see through as easily. And then people just don't really know who's in the car, who's not in the car. But it makes the car just, to me, a more personalized type of vehicle. So, oh my goodness, what's gonna happen to the Ram TRX, right? I mean, the Ram TRX, um, do I really make somebody that foolish to give up my Hellcat Red Eyes for that? I, I have been down the Ram TRX path so many times. And do I go that route? I don't know. It would really come down to really impressive values on the existing cars. If they're not impressive values, it's just no way. So at least I'd feel like, all right, I bought these cars. I didn't lose my tail on them. I did okay. It positioned me to be able to buy the Ram TRX. And, and also, it opened the door. If I really want to just get back another SRT 392, I'm sure some people would be like, why do you continue to reference these cars to the SRT when they don't really call that anymore? Well, for me, it's the performance pack edition. And that's just the way I look at these cars. It's the SRT um, performance vehicle that has the bigger motor in it, has typically the bigger wheels and tires. It has the different drive modes. It has more of the the uh, performance look to it. So I just like to reference it that way instead of I'm going to get myself the SXT Dodge Challenger. Or I'm going to get the RT Challenger, which isn't the uh, SRT package. It's the 5.7 Hemi motor. So there's different abbreviations and all. So anyways, the Ram TRX, badass truck. It really is. But what's interesting is, you know, in this, this state that I live in, so many people these days are tinting out their front windshield. So they're putting a full tint across the windshield. I'm not talking about this um, sun visor tint. I'm saying they do a whole tint. And in the state of Virginia, for you to be able to pass inspection, you have to be able to show in your registration your registration that you have a medical eye challenge. Your eyes are very sensitive to sunlight and brightness. And so your optometrist gives you a medical exception that is then put on the registration of your vehicle that you need to have a uh, windshield that's tinted okay if you don't have that it's not legal but yet so many people these days are tinting out their front windshields i hear these conversations all the time how the heck are you getting through inspection because technically an inspector will not pass the car if they know you don't have that medical exception on your registration wowsker wowsker so here at sam's club look at that 378 for premium up where I live it's like 450 a gallon so wow well worth coming to Sam's right to fill up the car with premium oh the projects the grocery shopping to get the gas to work what's really cool about these cars is you go grocery shopping you got plenty of room between the trunk and the rear seat to the, put a bunch of groceries in Lady getting gas right next to me goes, hey, you want to race? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, she looks like she's trying to race. You want to race? She's like, no, I'm just asking. <laughs> now, now, here I've left my Dodge Charger. Super be in this big old parking lot now. For the record, 
Um, my Hellcats, keep in mind, I'm only here temporarily. But I tell you what, anymore, if I worked here <laughs> and left my car all the time, what do, you think, what, what do you think would happen? Yeah, I mean, when the Hellcats, that's the challenge of the Hellcats for sure. Leave those things out in the parking lot and you just feel like, bye bye. All right, so what do you get for $220? Water, lemonade, some shrimp, tomatoes, some bread, some lunch meat, um, chips, some eggs, and dog food. Got $220. Like, and that's something. Yeah. Hey, I wonder where the car is. Maybe you know where it is. Now, see what's so cool about this car? Will all this stuff fit in there pretty easily? I think it will. Okay, Doke, there you go. Car has plenty of. Got a bit of food back there. That's why this Dodge Charger is so much fun. I mean, this is a fun car. You may not be excited about the color of it, but it's such a fun car that you can do so many things with it and have a blast. Now, one nice thing about the new Ford Mustang GT is when you set your settings here in the different modes right here, it leaves it from the previous time you drove the car. So it doesn't change the uh, settings when you turn it off. I like that, because one thing about these cars, you're constantly like fighting the uh, different settings on these cars as you drive down the road. It just gets kind of aggravating. And uh, so, anyways, the Ford and you know, Ford didn't used to do that, but the new generation does. It'd be interesting to see all the updates on these cars. Dodge, they're going to take a time out, I think. I mean, this is what's not real clear. Is Dodge going to offer a year from now the new Dodge Daytona? Um, edition car. I don't. I have no idea. So, is it? Are you waiting until 2025? I don't know. And with the UAW thing going on, um, you know, does that throw a loop in things? It sure does. So I just don't know. I, I mean, Dodge just isn't talking much. They did the big Banshee electric reveal, and you know, just I think a lot of people are like. It's all electric. They just didn't like it. So it'd be very interesting to see if Dodge really does go all electric or if they're going to pull back and they're going to re-strategize to make something more of their customer base wants. For me, what's so interesting is a year from now, what's the Dodge dealership's inventory going to look like? And I think to myself, I don't think it's going to be very exciting. I think these Dodge dealers are going to be sucking wind on the Dodge side. I can't see the Dodge Hornet being the flare to drive people to the dealership. It's going to drive me to the dealership. And what happens with that is uh, when people aren't just kind of walking through your showroom, it takes down the ability to even sell other things. You want foot traffic. That's what it's all about is foot traffic. And, and so anyway, so a year from now, if Dodge isn't releasing any real ice, latest, greatest, performance vehicle besides just used vehicles sitting around the dealership it would be the challenger and the charger srt products their their lots are going to be spartan for performance vehicles you're going to be talking about the ram trx but to most people that's not a performance vehicle that's a truck you're going to be talking about the durango but we don't even know at this time if they'll even have a hellcat set up so wow i mean i just think wow lame interesting times ahead for next year but at the same time as Dodge uh, before the year's out have breaking news I just don't know oh the plum crazy is just plum crazy fun wow another great day in the Dodge Charger Super B just love this car I know for some they like, ah it's hideous it's purple I like it All right, it's a plum crazy wrap.
I mean, a wrap up of the day. What a great day in the Plum Crazy Super B. 2023 Dodge Charger Wide Body Performance Package, whatever I call it. Hey, here's the Coyote. Here is the 2024 GT. What happened to that thing? Oh my gosh. Follow my channel. Watch my channel. Tomorrow is all about taking the GT to the dealer. And we're going to model with the Steeda Performance Parts. So watch my video for tomorrow as I drive this server to the Coons Baltimore Ford for them to modify my brand new 2024 GT Mustang. But hey, it's all about plum crazy. What about that tent? Some people don't think it's dark enough. I think it's plenty dark. I love it. Thanks for watching my channel. Uh, share the fun and the adventures and stay tuned. And look forward to talking to you in the morning on the morning conversations. I'm going to show you my Rooney stickers tomorrow. So have a great evening and God bless. Stay safe.